welcome everybody. Now it's uh, never easy starting a small business with constant challenges from, from global giants, uh, changing regulations uh, and getting in front of new clients. Um, and of course, then there's been the pandemic as well, which has added a whole new layer of challenges and complexity. So how have small businesses coped um, during this sort of period? And what shape are they in, importantly, as the, the economy begins to emerge from the pandemic? Uh, to discuss the last 18 months and importantly talk about prospects for the future. Um, I'm joined by Jamie and Josh, founders of Syrup Room, uh, which is a fabricated design business based in Bournemouth that although it's quite small in terms of uh, size, it's actually got a global client base, which is brilliant. Um, guys, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. Off the back of the pandemic, um, what did you sort of do to keep the business kind of running? Uh, and where do you feel you are now in terms of kind of prospects for the future? Um, so we, at the beginning of the pandemic, we kind of assessed what we did and assessed what we do. And there wasn't a lot of physical things. And we kind of looked into the future of what will we be, what will people want uh, yeah. coming out of this? So we used our skills and our equipment to think diversify. Actually, diversify. Um, we had some vans that we had here um, that weren't being used because there was no events. So yeah. we converted them into campers. So we used all the material that we had stocked and stored um, to make some super cool campers, which was which was great. And fun. So yeah. many people were so engaged with it on social media because everyone was dreaming of getting away. Um, and they went really quick, so much so that we're now um, about to do another one, which is which is super fun. A really like new kind of to another level of camper fans. So, yeah, yeah. Super, super fun. yeah. So we we diversified a lot to keep things to keep things going when our commercial clients had sort of stopped, paused, um, yeah. paused, yeah, <laughs> and um, and really just started to evaluate our costs, our outgoings, everything from the business. Yeah. and how we could keep things going really and i guess um due to the nature of your work sort of you know, fabricated design the yeah. um the the kind of energy usage was kind of quite intensive you've clearly got a lot of kit 3d printers etc um and lighting being sort of amongst the common challenges would that be right yeah so yeah. um there was so many elements to the the kind of where we had to scale back as we had this new big amazing warehouse had all the all the energy put in we had it all wired up to charge our cars and blah 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 um we had all big lighting we t we changed all the lighting to led instead of factory yeah. lighting um we went then ran all led panels in our workshop so we looked into that in the sense of we want to be sustainable anyway but also yeah. save cost um but the also the best thing about that was that we just were able to look at where our costs were going with the smart meter and go actually we don't need these massive industrial warehouse lamps what is a new alternative and we can yeah. just watch that saving happen you know so yeah there's been some changes it's very bright in here and um, lots of lighting now yeah. so, <laughs> but, yeah. but it's all yeah super sustainable and uh, and yeah low low cost to run and so i guess having sort of accurate and, and not estimated bill, bills must have provided a real sort of peace of mind um, you know, and support when forecasting for a small business like yourself. 100%. I mean, it, it, it really helped us because of our equipment. It does cost a lot of money to run. We've gone from trying to trying to run cars and vans to, to we'd convert into electric. We've got two electric cars for the business. So things like that, it, it really helps to know, okay, is, is it going to be cost effective for us to do this? Obviously, when we like to do everything as sustainable as possible, um, and that also lets us know, right, is this piece of equipment we're going to buy, is it going to be cost effective to run? Is it going to be good for the environment? Um, and being able to estimate, not estimate, and, yeah. and have a running of that, um, it, it, it lets us forecast with the equipment that we buy. And, and we're almost to the point where we're now looking at taking our van and, and getting an electric van as well, because yeah. we can just have all that energy cost in one, like a visible kind of package. So that is helping us in the sense of, there's a lot of admin that takes with like fuel and putting in receipts for fuel, blah, blah, blah. But if that's just one invoice that's being put in as an energy bill, it is so much simpler admin yeah. wise. Um, and when you can watch it and say that, look, this is where we've spent our money this month. And it's not a random number picked out of the air is focused on what you have used, which is great. Yeah. And at this point, um, it'd be good to bring in uh, Fleur Lawton, um, spokesperson for uh, Smart Energy GB, to talk about um, how uh, business owners can get smart meters 
for their small business and what the process for installation is. So what you need to do is to contact your energy supplier, have a chat with them about upgrading to a smart meter. They will talk to you about the options for your business and how you go about that. You can book an installation with them, um, depending on when your business works and things like that, depends on when they can come round and do that. It does mean that your energy will be off for a couple of hours whilst they install the new meters. So you need to be aware of that and discuss it with your energy supplier. Thanks for that, Flo. Now I'll come back to, uh, to Jamie and Josh. And have you been able to sort of figure out how much you have saved um, since your smart meter was installed? So it, it, interestingly, amazingly, we have grown the company yeah. um, during this pandemic. So we've we've actually been we've used a higher usage of, of energy and we've got we've, we're now in a bigger environment. So a, a correlation pounds and pennies wise is quite hard to estimate because we've we've got, got a lot more, equipment. more um, yeah. and we've got the cars, but we can we can say that our bills are actually cheaper now um, in the sense of overall as before when it was estimated because the estimated bills, we would be dropped with a, with a massive bill and I'd be going, how have we used this? How have we used this? And we, we literally are running the small city. Yeah. But because it was a commercial estimated bill and it was such a, it was, that's how it works. You know, it's the old school way. And we love technology. Everything's app controlled now, and we want to be knowing exactly how much we're using. I mean, even to the point where you're getting alerts from your bank these days telling you how many coffees you're buying. Yeah, we needed to have that in this new school way, which is which is what a smart meter is, and it just allowed us to to make a physical saving. There were times where we compared um, bills, which was good. I mean, you don't want to spend too much time doing that because it makes you sad at how much you're paying for, <laughs> yeah, uh, and how much money was lost, but. There is a massive correlation with, with money saving and having a smart meter. Yeah. And I'm just very interested, guys, because you, you both sort of mentioned sustainability. How important is this sort of balance of, of being, you know, a kind of sustainable or even a sort of circular type business with kind of um, managing the kind of the energy cost base? Totally. We love yeah. sustainability. Guys, thank you very much for joining us. Um, good luck for the future. And we'll sort of keep an eye on what you get up to. But for now, thank you very much for joining me. Cheers. Thank Thanks you very so much. much.